Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. If you're an organic gardener, you've probably seen kelp-based fertilizer products in your local greenhouse. They come in fertilizers, kelp meals, and kelp powders, but really what are these kelp products and what benefits do they bring to your garden? Let's take a look first at the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These are macronutrients that are required for plant growth and are often the first things to be depleted. The highest reported NPK in a kelp product that I could find was from the Colorado State Extension's website with an NPK of 104. Most other kelp-based products have negligible NPKs. If they do have an NPK, it's often because they've been combined with fish products or fish waste or fish emulsions to give the product an NPK. With a negligible NPK of most kelp products, let's take a look at the trace elements. There are 18 trace elements that are required or beneficial for plant growth. An absence or presence of these elements will have implications on the plant's growth cycle and ability to produce for you. Of these 18 elements, there are two that are not commonly tested for. That's silicon and chlorine. And the reason is, is they're abundantly available all across the earth, so there's no real need to actually test for them. There are many varieties of kelp used in agriculture to add these essential and beneficial elements to the soil. When one of these varieties of kelp was run for trace elemental analysis, they found results in milligrams per liter of copper, magnesium, zinc, iron, potassium, manganese, cobalt, and sodium. These results accounted for 8 of the 16 commonly tested for essential and beneficial elements for plant growth. Kelp is not only marketed for the elements that it adds to the soil, but for its concentrations of plant growth hormones. These plant growth hormones can have an impact on the vigor and vitality of these plants. One of the notable effects of plant growth hormone is to stimulate root growth, resulting in a larger root system. Anecdotally, a larger root system can result in a plant that is better able to handle stresses, droughts, and produce a larger plant and larger crop for you. Kelp has been found to have a high concentration of plant growth hormone contained within it. However, this plant growth hormone has had varying success when tested on the establishment and vitality of seedlings, and generally speaking, within 5-10 to 10 weeks after transplanting outdoors, there's negligible effects. An over-application of plant growth hormones has actually shown to have a quite a negative effect on seedling establishment and vitality of the plant over the season. So kelp does bring some benefits to the garden, right? Well, I'm not quite sold on the idea of using kelp in my garden. Let me tell you why. So the two main benefits that a kelp product brings to you is its ability to add beneficial and essential elements to the soil and the plant growth hormones. Over the last few weeks, we've been speaking about a number of free and local resources and analyzing their content. Specifically today, we're talking about the fall leaves and comfrey. Both fall leaves and comfrey have been shown to have these essential and beneficial elements contained with them. With fall leaves having 11 of 16 and comfrey having 15 of 16, the only element that is missing from all three sample sets is selenium. Selenium is part of three different amino acids and plays a critical role. So likely what we have here is soils all contain selenium but they're probably just below the detection limit of the test that we use to analyze for it. In addition, comfrey has a pretty good NPK, whereas kelp products simply do not. So with a weak NPK and more trace elements and free and local resources like fall leaves and comfrey, let's take a look at the plant growth hormones. Earthworms play a critical role in our gardens and they provide us a number of benefits. They break down organic material, leaving behind nutrients, beneficial bacteria, and plant growth hormones. A paper published in the European Journal of Soil Biology found the same plant growth hormones from kelp extracts in association with the humic acid of vermicompost. So once again, a free and local resource is a great source of plant growth hormones. If you don't have access to vermicompost or you garden in containers, you can get plant hormone extracted from other sources. Often these extracts are not only more available, but they cost less. Over the past few years, I've been using vermicompost when I plant my new seedlings. Not only does this add the worm castings, but live composting worms as well.
in collaboration with my mulch layer made up of fall leaves, wood chip, used coffee grounds, comfrey, and other free and local resources, I have an abundant and free source of not only beneficial and essential elements, but plant growth hormones as well. Knowing that these free and local resources can generate the same benefits as this product, I prefer to use them. It's also the more environmentally friendly solution. Commercial harvesting of kelp from the ocean for the production of fertilizer products is extremely damaging. Kelp is a primary producer, and what this means is everything above it in the food chain is dependent on the kelp's energy and ability to grow there. When you remove kelp from the ocean, you can cause a local ecosystem collapse in the aquatic environment. Harvesting kelp from the ocean is similar to harvesting the leaf litter layer in a forest. Collecting small amounts of kelp from the shore is likely equivalent to taking small amounts of leaves from the edge of a forest you're not likely going to create significant environmental impact from the practice, but why would you go to that extent when you have free and local resources that would otherwise be heading to landfill, produced usually much closer to your own home? Another added benefit of free and local resources is they're free and they're local. They're often produced much closer to home and, quite often, don't require any fossil fuels to bring into your garden. Whereas kelp, you have to harvest it from the ocean, you have to process it, and then you have to ship the product. Although the cost may be reasonable for some of these products, you're still losing fossil fuels where the alternates not only perform better, but don't cost you any fossil fuels. So why would you go to all of this trouble risking the environment when you have free and local resources in your very own backyard that produce a better result for you? Kelp products do have a fair spread of essential and beneficial elements and plant growth hormone, but I cannot support the practice as it is more environmentally damaging and costs more to us in the long run than these free and local resources that would otherwise be heading to the landfill. I suspect this video is going to generate some conversation and I would love to hear about it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.